RC. We're out here in Avon Park, Florida at the Avon Park Air Modelers Association. We're going to take up the Hobby Zone Carbon Cub S2. All right, we've already done a range test. I'm running a 2700 Hobby Star 3S center. Probably a little big for this plane, but I got a little bit of wind today, so I want some penetration. And you know what? We're going to turn our model off or prop off for just a second. I want to check the CG real quick. It's about 40 inches or 40 millimeters in. Maybe a little more than that, but that feels pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right. It's about, I think I want to say it's about 50, 60 millimeters in from the leading edge there. As far as where you put your fingers at underneath the wing, and she seemed to do pretty good. But I'll know more when I take her up. Right aileron, left aileron, up elevator, down elevator, right rudder, left rudder. And plenty of plane. Good looking plane. Good looking plane. All right. See, if I was a tip stall right now, yeah. If you start to tip stall, I believe the point, the thing to do is to put in the opposite rudder. And, uh, I'm just too chicken to try it. <laughs> well, let's see. If I start going this way. Yeah, that seems to pull out of it. See, in other words, right now my left wing's dipping, right? So then I put up the right rudder. So if you start to tip stall, opposite direction of the wing that's going down for the, with your rudder. Right wing, left a, a rudder. Okay, so left wing, right rudder. Kind of like what you're setting up for a uh, knife edge. Here we go. This is another one of those planes that I'm just very, very comfortable with, even in weird wind. This wind today, is, it, it keeps changing from the southeast, from the southwest, from the south. It can't make up its mind. Yeah, this plane can be a little knife edge machine for you if you want it to be. Put in the landing or my landing flaps now and do a little bit of windsurfing. Sorry about the sun. And all I'm doing with windsurfing, like that's what I like to call it. I'm putting her in the wind, got them flaps all the way down, and I'm just going to ride that wind. Got the minimal amount of, of throttle, just enough to keep forward momentum. Still in that configuration right now. See, I'm just kind of riding the wind. Almost at some point, the wind is strong enough and you keep your wings level enough, you can just about fly backwards. And all you're doing, you're not truly flying backwards. You're, you're allowing yourself to be moved backwards while keeping your wings level. Now, as far as landing goes in this kind of wind, no, you don't want to use flaps with, into the wind. Not that much, not this much wind. Uh, you got your vortex generators. There we go. This is probably one of my favorite planes to fly. It's an absolute joy to fly. Plenty of power, plenty of uh, oomph, <laughs> plenty of, of uh, power. I don't know what I'm saying. It's got plenty of everything. It's got more than enough speed. It's got them nice big Tundra tires on there. That was like I was a kind of a slow, non-snap snap roll. <laughs> Let's see if we can pull a nice landing like that off on the runway. And yeah, if 
Folks, those of you that are a stickler about rules at clubs, I am on the runway. But I'm the only pilot here. If any other pilot was to come here, we start getting more plane situation, then I obviously will get off the runway. But take her up. Let her stall. <laughs> oh, just a fun little plane. And when the sun hits that hits that silver and that yellow, um, as they say in the fashion world, it just pops. <laughs> Boy, that almost sounded weird, didn't it? All right, let them vortex generators do their job. And what what a what a vortex generator! You can kind of see those ridges on the front of the wings. Those are angled slats, and what it does, it forces the wind to come in. And, and, and creates kind of a lower, I guess a higher pressure area on top of your wing, giving you a little more lift than what you would have otherwise. And uh, a little more, and more lift means stay in the air longer. Gives you a little more stability at a lower speed. Now that wind is just kicking that tail around. Full speed. And that's a little bit better of a snap roll. <laughs> Proof that you can do it. Yeah, I think that battery's just fine. 2700 is a bit more than what you should run. Really, probably a 2200 would be about as big as you really want to go on this plane. All right, now the wind's really at my back now. So, there you go, buddy. Was that a good flight? That was a good flight. All right, still got a minute and 10 seconds on a six minute timer. Let's take off in the grass. Show you a little bit of grass hops there. All right, and we just land in the grass, so. Whoa, can't quite. Didn't have enough momentum to pull that roll off. Alright, I think we're going to land her, because folks, yes I know it's still May, but in Florida, our summer starts basically April 1st, so it is hot as you know what right now. Whoa, right around, that wind got underneath that wing, and I can't leave it that way, can't leave it that way can't land like that got to show you a good landing but the wind I was turning wind got underneath that wing flipped her right on over so that's going to happen over there moving away from the F-16 killing zone yeah I know timers a my timer going off there we go time's expired time's expired prop motor off before we touch it but I ran for a full six minutes and two seconds several landings and take a look look, look at the wind push the plane back all right props off let's or throttle cut is on, however way you want to look at it. And that's where I've got the 2700 pushed almost all the way forward. Let's take her out. And after six minutes of flying this bad boy pretty hard, let's just see what kind of battery life I've got left. 66%, <laughs> I could have gone for 12 minutes. 66% folks after six minutes and two seconds of flying her pretty hard and trying to do maneuvers and stuff not bad you can go a full 12 minutes easy that's a 2700 now on a 2200 let's say you can do 10 minutes nine minutes conservatively all right well folks there you go that is the hobby zone carbon cub s2 it is the bind and fly 
and uh, I recommend it. It's a great trainer. A um, little more expensive than the Trekker, but uh, you get this in the ready to fly. I want to say it's 300, maybe a little more. When it comes with everything you need to out of the box, this one's the bind and fly. In other words, you've already got your own transmitter, and all you got to do is bind it. So, uh, great plane. This airframe has been around forever. This Carbon Cub SS actually exists in real life, the same color scheme. And here's a mod that I did. These wheel pants are famous for coming off on this plane. Same thing with the uh, Sport Cub S2, the old park zone, which is this is the same thing. These would pop off. Just run these little zip, black zip ties through the openings and around the frame, and they're not coming off. That's just a real easy, cheap mod, and I don't charge extra for it. All right, folks, there you go. You can pick us up at Hobby Zone. I will put, yes, an affiliate link <laughs> in the description for this plane, but you all know I've had this plane a long time, and I've been giving you links to where you can buy it long before I was an affiliate with Hobby Zone. So I'll put that in there to the bind to fly and to the ready to fly. And it's a great trainer. You saw I just had some fun with it. And there's umpteen thousand videos on it by other people that say it's a great trainer. All right, folks, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget, faith, family, friends, and then planes. Bye, y'all.